Right, I'm making this video this afternoon because um, I've been using the Peak Millets software to access the HP8903 audio analyzer. Um, and then unless you do get it exactly um, installed correctly, um, you have a hell of a lot of problem getting it to work. And it's also a bit confusing on what software you actually need to install. So I'm just going to do, make a run through on this whilst it's fresh in my mind. Um, so let me go into the programs you need to have installed. First of all, you've got to have installed the uh, .NET 3.5 uh, Service Pack 1, and the, well, the most up-to-date version seems to be the one it's looking for. That needs to be installed on the system first. Now, the only other two programs you need installed are the VE Runtime Libraries. Now, I'm using uh, 9.3, uh, and that's from, downloaded from Agile Technologies. 9.3 is the latest version that will work on XP, which is what I'm using. That needs to be installed, and the other thing that needs to be installed is the IO libraries from uh, Agilent or probably Keysight. Install the latest version likewise for those. This is 17.019013, uh, as you see here, uh, and they're installed as well. Now, when you connect up your uh, GPIB adapter, you'll be you've got to be absolutely sure that it's been detected by the uh, computer so when you plug it in it's actually detecting the, the device correctly and it will only do that I think once you've installed all the uh, software correctly so the program you need to check to make sure everything's working there are no other programs I thought there's another program needed to configure it but it's this one here it's the Agile VE Pro 9.3 runtime and config and it's the IO configuration click on that and it will greet you with this screen here Just zoom in a bit so you can see what it's saying Now, uh, this is my computer on the top here, GPIP0, which is the first GPIB uh, device, which is basically the dongle, that, so that's, that's my dongle. And you'll see below that, attached to this item, is the audio analyzer. Now, it won't come up with audio analyzer normally because this isn't a plug and play GPIB device, it's too old for that. So basically, the uh, software will come up with new new device and it will show you uh, what port it's on. So here's our GPIP 0 and it's uh, address 28 and you can actually call that up on the front panel of the HP 8903 with a special function command to uh, just verify that you're using the correct version. Um, once you've done that go into right, right click and go into instrument properties. Now what you need to do, and this is where I kept making a mistake, is I kept spelling audio analyzer incorrectly. You need to rename it. Uh, it will be new up, new device, or it will be some gobbledygook in the name here. Uh, rename that audio analyzer, A-N-A-L-Y-Z-E-R. Okay, uh, interface should be GPIB. Uh, your board number should be probably zero because that will be the first GPIB, unless you've obviously got other GPIB devices on, on your system. It's the first device, which is zero. Uh, Visa uh, uh, alias. I thought I tried running uh, that with the audio analyzer, and that caused a bit of a confusion with the software when it actually finally got it working. Leave those blank. The Visa address should be, as I mentioned earlier, the GPIB zero dongle address twenty eight, and then it just says instrument. That's fine. Um, in advanced um, now, generally, generally it says timeout. Uh, Live mode on uh, bytes, most significant bit, uh, description optional. That was there already. I haven't touched any of that. Direct in, in out, uh, SCPI XML file name. No idea what that's on about, but that's common XML. Uh, and you can see here all these settings are basically haven't been touched. Nothing there has been altered at all. Uh, so that's. Uh, pretty straightforward. Let me just move this, zoom out a bit so you can see a bit clearer. Okay, so yeah, that's basically, that's all basically default. Plug and play driver. Um, I've dis disabled the click arrows on here to uh, perform identif identif identification query. I don't think that's necessary. Um, because it isn't using plug and play, but I turned it off because as it, as it wasn't plug and play, I couldn't see the point in you know, asking the, the the computer asking the HP 8903 what it was when the HP 8903 doesn't understand the command. 
and I think it will actually flag up a error message on the uh, 8903 display. Um, uh, IVI com driver, no idea what that is. That, I've left that all default. You can see the settings there. Panel driver, not sure what that is. That's been default. So that's all default. But the most important thing is if you click on the, um, so we're clicking OK that. Once you've done all that, what you mustn't do now is close it. And this is where I, the other mistake I was doing. You set all the settings up, you renamed it all. You've got all the settings, how I've got them here. What you must do then is click on this save button here. And you save that and that saves the configuration. If you don't do that, and you close the program, it's just left how it was. It was left how it was before you came in and altered any settings or anything. So that's really confusing. It, it, when you quit, it doesn't say, are you sure you want to quit without saving? It just it just quits. And I'll show you here, if you just click, it's, it, just, it just closes it. Once you've closed this box, click on that and it will close. Um, likewise, if you've got problems where you can't actually see the in, the item, the, the, the uh, dongle itself, the actual um, GPIB controller, click on the find button and it should come up. And it should come up as the, it's GPIB0 or whatever device number yours is. Um, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem and it should also actually detect anything hanging on that uh, controller as well, which is obviously here is my audio analyzer. So what well, the problem I was having, and, I, and it's working at the moment now, when I open this up, I'd have a message saying, uh, cannot find all an audio analyzer, please add it from the instrument list. Now, as I say, it it's, seems pretty critical that you spell it right. If you spell it wrong, it's looking for that name. It's not looking for any sort of port address or anything. It's looking for a name. If it doesn't see the name, it, will, it thinks the item's not there. It seems to be that because this is such an old piece of uh, software or uh, hardware, this analyzer, it doesn't actually support sort of like... It, I, I would expect it to look for an address, you know, or a, a sort of like a, a reference to the uh, device rather than a, a, just a, a name, but it actually is looking for the name. So, yeah, this is really sort of more for me because I've had so much problems getting this working. I've done this so many times before. I spent nearly a couple of hours this morning, probably more than that, trying to get this thing to work then realising I wasn't saving the settings and then also realised I wasn't actually saving the name. So... I actually copied and pasted the information from the Pete Millet site and uh, put it in there and of course didn't save it because I didn't click that save icon so I thought I you know I got the name right and still couldn't understand why it wouldn't save couldn't work wouldn't work and then I realized simply because even though I pasted in the name I hadn't saved it so therefore it was still spelt analyzer with the the way I spelt it which was I don't know if it's the British way or they just the you know the wrong way of spelling it but it it, it doesn't work um it's a great little bit of software. Um, the only thing it hasn't got is it's quite limited on its vertical resolution. You see, it's uh, if, you know this is 5 dB here. So if you're for very, you know, it's it's great if you've got an amplifier that's sort of not particularly flat. You've got a good idea of what the response curve is. But on sort of things like this audio, this amplifier I've just been running on, um, you just get a straight line basically. Uh, doesn't show up much detail, um, but. Um, be interested to see if we could actually alter that and I might see if I can get in contact with Pete Millen and see if he knows any way of uh, increasing the vertical resolution you know so we've got maybe just a plus or minus 10 dB uh, full scale sort of thing so we start sort of minus 5 here 0 dB plus 5 that would be that would be better for me I can't see any way of changing that um, but uh, it's a free bit of software. It's excellent. It makes the it makes the audio analyzer much more usable, and it's great because you can plot out charts and things like that, and uh, get an idea of what's going on. Anyway, thanks for watching.